Hello, good afternoon everyone. I, Dr. Nayara Farooqui, welcome you all to Physio TV. Today, we are going to have a webinar on PNF in Neuro Rehabilitation by Dr. Dinesh Chahan. I would like to welcome Dr. Dinesh Chahan. Sir is MPT in Neurosciences, PhD scholar NUHS from Sage GS Medical College, Associate Professor in Sancheti College of Physiotherapy. Sir is a certified IPNFA a PNF therapist. Sir is also a, a certified NDT and aquatic therapist. Sir has more than 10 research papers, publication. I welcome you, sir, and hand over the session to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful introduction, Dr. Nayara. Okay, so today we are going to see in a part one proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation that is PNF in neuro rehabilitation. Myself, Dr. Dinesh Chan, I am Associate Professor in Sanchit College of Physiotherapy. So, objective of PNF in neuro rehabilitation. So, so today we are going to see the need of the study. Then what are the history of PNF techniques and what is the neurophysiological basis behind it? Then what are the principles of the PNF and then basic process? So we'll see what is the definition of the PNF. So what is meaning of proprioceptive? So proprioceptive means that any of the sensory receptor that gives the information concerning the movement and the position of the body. What is mean by neuromuscular pertaining to the nerve and muscle? Facilitation means just promotion of any natural process or making things easier or faster so that it helps the recovery faster. So that is nothing but a facilitation. So neuromuscular <coughs> and facilitation. So this is the definition of PN. So why we want to study the PN? the need of the study. So PNF has a wide varieties of uses. So in a neuromuscular, neurological condition, we'll see PNF use most commonly in spinal cord injury patient, stroke patient, Parkinson patient, and those are the other neurological issues. Even we see in a sports also, the PNF used. So in a sports, if you if we see mostly in a stretching purpose, we use a PNF that is hold relax and contract relax technique. When we see, we you know, then in a musculoskeletal problem also we use a PNF in a treatment. Then cardiorespiratory condition also. So when we want to improve our chest mobility, we use a PNF technique. So PNF has a wide varieties of uses, not only in neural rehabilitation, it is in musculoskeletal sports and uh, cardiac. So what is the history behind the PNF? So PNF developed by a uh, Dr. Herman Kabat and the physio Maginot in the late 1940s and early 1950s. As a means of rehabilitation for neurological disorder, so basically, it started first in case of multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, and poliomyelitis. And they found a good result when they treated the patient. So what is the physiology uh, philosophy behind PNF techniques? Yes, it is an integrated approach because here we see the all the function movement. So we teach, teach the patient the goal-oriented movement. Mobilizing a reserve, that means whatever patient has a good strength so that we can use to strengthen the weaker muscle. So that is nothing but we, mobilizing the reserve means the weaker muscle can be activated by using a stronger group of muscle strength that in a irradiation. Positive approach, yes. So positive approach, when you see the patient, we first find out what is good in that. Okay. 
So whatever patient has good, that first we take, we encourage the patient that yes, yeah, this is the good thing, you have good strength. So let's focus on the weaker so we can use that good strength to improve the weaker part of the person. Highest level of function, yes, in PNF we need a highest level of function. That means a little bit cognition is good because when we use a PNF as a irradiation, as a pattern, we want little bit cognition. So highest level of function is very important. Yeah. Again, most important philosophy is motor learning and motor control. So when we <clears throat> see in a motor learning, the phases and motor control, PNF uses in a treatment purpose when they use a technique as well as a pattern. So these are the physio <clears throat> physiological behind a PNF. So now we'll see what are the stages of motor learning and motor control. So motor learning stages, PNF says that, yes, you have to use first cognitive phase, associative phase, then autonomous phase. So in a motor learning, <coughs> cognition is very important. What is cognition phase means? Cognition phase means whenever we are performing any pattern, the patient has to know that what, how, I have to do, supposed to do. Okay, that is cognitive. So they know that yes, I have to perform this movement. That is means cognitively they are good. So we have to train first a cognitive phase. Then <clears throat> associative means that yes, the patient will make the mistake that in that condition. It's okay, that is learning phase. So whatever mistake they <clears throat> do again correctly, that is associative phase. Autonomous phase means, yes, they have learned the movement, they have trained that movement, whatever composite, <coughs> missing component was that. Now they are in a autonomous phase. So autonomous phase means uh, independent, actively, and here more focus on the skill part. Because already the movement is learned completely. So, in PNF, they have taken consideration of cognitive, associative, and autonomous. Then what are the motor control? That's very important. When we are performing uh, any technique or any pattern, so we should know what task the movement demands. Is it the movement the mobility related? It is the movement is stability related or control or skill. So mobility basically is for, we do mostly for the upper limb, that is for the upper limb area related activity. Then stability, stability mostly the trunk is a straight and stable so that if trunk is good in providing stability, then mobility part is easy for upper limb and lower limb. Control mobility, as mobility and stability Train, so we have to focus on the control movement here. So movement will be a functional movement with a control activity. So here control mobility, here again we introduce here some task with activity, with a functional activity. Skill, refine movement. So if you learn the mobility, that how to do, and you will achieve the stability and your the mobility, then skill part is very important. Fine movement, basically for the upper living, do a manipulation with the hand. Manipulation with the different types of grip require a lot of skill. Okay, so here motor control is again very important. How you go with the mobility, stability, control mobility. So these are the stage we follow during PE. So what are the phases of motor learning? As we <clears throat> have already discussed about the cognitive phase. So here in the cognitive phase, we require a lot of attention first. So focus on the attention first. So as the progress goes in the learning from cognitive phase to associative phase, the attention required less. As you see in the graph, in the red line shows that cognitive phase, the attention required more. As it comes to the associative phase, that is required delays. Then as 
goes from auto <coughs> associative to autonomic phase here you got less attach okay so if you see the second graph as attention facilitates that first required attention firstly with the verbal command tactile facilitation visual so these are the basic process we follow so initially in cognitive phase we have to use our visual verbal and tactile facilitation then as we proceed in the associative phase the requirement of the visual verbal or tactile facilitation will be less in autonomic phase it again less so <clears throat> when we goes with the phases the initial phase attention is more as progress with the phase attention required because the movement learn automatically okay so what is the neurophysiology <clears throat> basic so concept of facilitation and inhibition the pnf the moves work on the facilitation and inhibit concession then stretch reflex the neurophysiological phenomena so we'll see now what is facilitation what is inhibition and how the stretch reflex is used so facilitation and impulse causing the recruitment and discharge of additional motor neuron in the spinal cord increase the excitability in the muscle weak muscle will be activated yes so as we facilitate the muscle the strength will be add added so here recruitment of the muscle fiber will be a more recruitment number of muscle fiber will be more and we will see the excitation of the muscle will be more add which is result in a good activity or movement so weak muscle will be activated so facilitation when we activate <coughs> the weaker muscle to again that so inhibition so any stimulus that causes the motor neuron to drop away from the discharge zone and away from the spinal cord that is the inhibition inhibition decrease the excitability in the muscle so mostly when there is a increase in the tone we want the inhibition so we have to stop the first discharge zone so that's nothing but you we want decrease the excitability of that muscle so there are technique we use to decrease the excitability so that is nothing but the inhibition so what is the neurophysiological phenomena autogenic inhibition reciprocal inhibition so autogenic inhibition in the name itself say auto means the itself generates of the inhibition so here if you see when the muscle contract the gto get activated and as the response by the inhibition this contraction contraction and contract contracting opposite muscle group that means autogenic inhibition whenever we want activation of like for example if i want to bend the hand okay so bicep activated okay so when i put the resistance here if i add on resistance add on resistance after some time your gto get activated in the bicep in the tendon okay so when the gto get activated so after the some time the same muscle get relax because contracting muscle after contraction as increase gto has a mechanism that same muscle will get a relax pitch so that is nothing but the gto the work so that's why autogenic inhibition same muscle contract and same muscle up to some time get relax that is autogenic inhibition reciprocal inhibition it deals with the relationship of the agonist and antagonist muscle so whenever there is a movement agonist whenever there is active contracting agonist the antagonist has to relax then only the movement will be happen in a smooth manner if antagonist is not activate not relaxing 
antagonist, then movement doesn't. So whenever we treat the patient, the reciprocal inhibition is very important. So what are the principles of PNA? So now we study the principle of PNA. All human beings have a potential that have not fully developed. So PNA are their principle. Yes, the human being has a potential that fully not developed. So PNA says that utilize that potential to activate the weaker muscle. Next, normal motor development proceed in a cervical caudal direction. Yes. So proximal to distal direction, normal cervical to caudal direction. So this can be used in a treatment. Developing a motor behavior is expressed in an orderly sequence of total patterns of movement and posture. So whenever we want to attain any position, we want first a proximal stabilization. So that's why the motor behavior is expressed in sequence manner, in orderly manner. So here, most important attainment of push. Improvement in a motor ability is dependent upon the motor learning, how the motor learning is happening, then we'll see motor abilities. As we already discussed the motor learning, the phases of motor learning, cognitive, associative, and autonomy. So if cognitive is good, associative is good, and autonomic is good, then improvement in the motor ability is very important. Next is frequency of stimulation and repetition of activity. When we use a frequency and repetition to promote and for retention of motor learning for development of strength and endurance. So PNF says that frequency is very important. In a day, how much frequently you do the movement or the activity. Repetition in a one go, how much repetition you want? Repetition, number of repetition, if it is more than 50, 100, the progression or retention of motor learning will be better. Then yes, very important here is goal-oriented activities occupied with techniques of facilitation are used to stun the learning of total pattern of walking or self-care activity. So PNF says that movement has to be a goal-oriented activity and with coupled with your facilitation technique. And again, it helps to improve your motor learning. So like example, walking. If you want to train the patient walking, you have to train the patient, use the technique in a walking pattern, self-care, ADL related activity. Pattern we can use in ADL pattern. So goal-oriented activity helps a faster a facilitation, faster movement. The reflex mechanism underlying the normal movement are recognized as a potent force for influence of movement and posture. So when we attain any movement or any posture, we can use a reflex mechanism, the normal mechanism, which the mostly use when we treat the patient by using a PNA approach. Repetition of coordinated movement is used to strengthen the strength and endurance and to access to the rear of the movement. Repetition is very important, but with the coordinated movement. So when we do a repetition and if there is no coordination, then there is no use of it. That's true. So coordinated movement more frequently used and that helps to improve endurance and as well as a strength. Next, normal movement and posture depends on the sinus 
and balance interaction of organs. Here, whenever we are performing any normal movement or attending any posture, synergies that agonist and antagonist, whenever we want agonist movement, antagonist has to be relaxed. Then only the balance and interaction, that movement will be attained. Development of activities are total patterns of movement and the posture to which patterns and techniques of ENF are applied precisely. So here activities is where we use in a movement or posture in a PNF technique. Like if you, if you use a diagonal pattern in activity base in the ADL, self-care activity and that helps. Next, stronger component of total pattern and the stronger power of action within the component pattern are used for augmentation of weaker component. So here, we use a stronger group of muscle to improve the weaker group of muscle strength. So whenever we are performing any pattern, we have to look for that what is good or what is a strong movement and how can I use the strong movement to improve the weaker movements, weaker group of muscle strain. So PNF says that use that stronger group of muscle strain to improve the weaker group of muscle strain. And that's very important when we use in a treatment program. Progress is enhanced by adequate performance of an activity within the sequence rather than adequate performance of varieties of activity. So when we want to do a progress of the movement or activity, we have to use in a sequence manner rather than in adequate performance. So sequence pattern is very important when we use a sequence when we want a progression to enhance. Here the therapist become a part of total movement pattern or effort of the patient. So the therapist has to play a important role that when we give a pattern or technique or PNF use the therapist has to be in a dynamic movement within the path, within the movement, with the movement, so that the patient will feel a lighter and the patient will use their strength more. The program of activity is selection in accordance with the patient need and potential. Here we have to find out which knee movement is needed of the patient. How much patient has the potential to do it? What is the need of the patient? If the female patient, the patient wants to do activity in a kitchen because they want independent in a kitchen. So we have to train the patient to do activity in the kitchen so that they are more interesting they are more confident and they have a good potential. If any patient when we treat their, if patient is athlete and if they want to go back and they want to do uh, agility training. So there also we have to find out what is the need of the patient. So yes, they want to go back to their work. So that means we have to find out what their work demands and according to that we have to train them. So PNA point principles say that program, whenever we are making any program of activity, patient center is very important. We have to focus on a patient. What is their need? What is their potential? And according to that, we have to select the movement. Now we have so the principles of PNF. Now we'll see what is the basic procedure of the PNF. So basic process of the PN procedure of the PNF helps to gain efficient motor function and increase the patient ability to move or remain in a stable. What the 
patient want that when we use all the basic process in pnf technique or approaches it helps to facilitate that it helps the patient to do a good movement maybe a mobility or stability according to the need guide the motion by proper grips appropriate resistance so here the grip that means mostly use here grip is lumbrical grip if you see this is the lumbrical grip which is a stronger grip okay so therapist grip is very important here the lumbrical grip how you are using a firm grip help the patient achieve a coordination coordinated movement through timing sequencing and increase the patient's stamina and ultimately it helps to reduce a uh, wide of fatigue so when we apply a basic process of the pnf we have to take consideration that we are applying a good basic process then only we hasten the learning of the movement basic process of the pnf or the pattern of facilitation so pattern of facilitation will be a diagonal pattern in a three plane the pnf says that use a three plane movement because we do all the activity in all the three plane not in a one single plane so we have to train that so facilitation proximal to distal facilitation with this pattern will be a diagonal pattern facilitation and distal to proximal movement but activation will be a proximal to distal next is manual contact manual contact when we touch the patient and we apply the technique or the pattern the manual contact plays a important role that it has to a purposeful corrective action so hand speaks the moment you touch the patient the patient patient know that the yes so i want this the movement is in which direction i want to do because manual contact says that yes you have to do the movement in the direction in this direction that means a purpose correct traction and approximation means traction helps to facilitate a flexion movement the movement traction give the traction to the joint joint will start activating muscle will start activating of flexor group of muscles whenever needed we do traction whenever needed we do approximation so traction needed when we do the flexion activity approximation needed when we perform a extension activity approximation is nothing but to provide the stability so joint is in a contracted position that means our knee antagonist both are providing stability to the joint so approximation helps to improve the stability improve the extension next is stretch and stimulus a reflex so whenever any activity we perform by activation of muscle muscle need to stretch so when we stretch the muscle that muscle works better because when you we do the movement if it is muscle in a short term position muscle doesn't work that much it required a optimum length so if it is optimal length is achieved by giving a stretch the muscle will immediately start the muscle will immediately contract so we have to follow these are the basic process next maximum resistance rather than maximum resistance i called it as optimum resistance so when we give a resistance to the movement 
the muscle will start activating fibers will start the muscle fibers will start recruiting a more and more fibers as resistance increases so whenever needed provide a resistance resistance itself activate a number of motor neuron and muscle recruitment fibers next command to the patient whenever needed softer command give a softer command whenever need a, a louder command give a louder command on the basis of command only we come to know that type of muscle contraction if we say take up up the muscle contraction is small if we say take up so contraction will be a more so command to the patient according to the need of the moment the larger excursion we want we have to be louder if you want a small excess a calm or a soft so command according to the moment according to the patient as a so command when we give it has to be clear command patient has to know what support he supposed to do next is vision so when we perform any technique or pattern vision plays a role that when we do the movement it has to be in a patient field of vision so the moment we see they perceive that says the muscle fiber or move muscle activation will be a more so we have to give a demonstration to the patient yes are you able to see the, the movement yes so when we the vision we use to facilitate or accelerate the movement next irradiation and reinforcement irradiation is nothing but spread of response when we want to activate a weaker muscle if we know that yes in that pattern there are muscle where we see a good amount of strain can we use that strain to improve the weaker group of muscle so irradiation we use we activate the stronger group of muscle in a such a way that it will irradiate to your weaker group of muscle and the movement or activity will be easier reinforcement reinforcement is addition of response we add a little bit response by activity so reinforcement we use to strengthen the muscle next timing normal time timing is very important because when we see the timing the timing of therapist and the patient timing of that decide the muscle activation activity if timing is normal that means the moment we say that lift up and muscle patient start lifting up for doing the movement timing is good followed that means we see a good movement optimum movement so timing of muscle activation also proximal first then intermediate then distal the activation of muscle is sequentially and timing of recruitment of muscle fiber yeah important is normal time so verbal how we give a cue verbal if you are louder softer calmer then we'll see the response according to that so these are the basic process and verbal is has to be clear understandable simple and the convey your message to the patient what he has to do if it is clear that means yes you are using a very good the basic person so when we perform any techniques or any patterns we have to follow all these this process and then we will see a very good result in a technique or in a pattern to achieve a normal movement according to the patient so in a summary we saw 
what is the neurophysiology? Initially, we started with the definition. What is the neurophysiology? Then what are the principles and what are the basic processes? Thank you so much for listening patiently. Over to you, Dr. Nayara. Thank you so much, sir. It was a very enlightening session. Sir, we came across the basic processes, but I, I would like to ask, how are these basic processes important when giving PNF to a patient? Yeah, so <clears throat> good question. So whenever we treat a patient in neurological condition, so we have to follow the basic procedure. We should know how much he is able to understand. So, so the example is a patient is low on, that means his uh, the consciousness, that means his orientation is low. He required a louder command. So there we have to use a louder command. So whenever we treat a patient, if we follow all the basic process, it's very easy to gain a strength or gain an improvement in the patient. So we can use as like, example, timing. Timing is very important. Verbal command is very important when we give to the patient. Resistance, where we want to use the resistance, optimum resistance. And again, when we treat the patient, if we want to use the irradiation, we should know which group is muscles has a stronger group that we use to improve the strength of weaker group. So these are the basic process we have to use when we give a technique or pattern to the patient. So it will show the good improvement in the move. You rightly mentioned the importance of basic processes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. It was a session full of information and knowledge. I would, I, it would definitely help the clinical practitioners in managing patients with better treatment and treatment approaches. Thank you, sir. I would at the end of uh, now we have come to an end of the part one of PNF in neuro rehabilitation. I would like to give vote of thanks to executive director Manisha Sangvi ma'am. Thank you chairman of Sancheti group, Dr. Parag Sancheti sir. Thank you to our beloved principal, Dr. Apurva Shimpi sir. Thank you to the technical team and Dr. Tushar sir for our constant support. And I'll, I'll also like to thank the all my viewers. Thank you. Thank you.